so much to share on the topic of kids clothing. Hopefully you don't have any kids yet or only have one so that going forward you can use these tips to save yourself a ton of time, money and stress. If you want to know what type of clothing I like to buy for my kids and how I keep it all organized, then keep on watching. Welcome back to Tiny and Tidy, I'm Vishelli, and as always, I'm excited to share organization tips and tricks that will hopefully make your life easier. This is a question that I'm often asked on Instagram and Facebook, which by the way, if you're not following me there, you're missing out. There's my handle, go follow me and learn from the mistakes that I've made so that you don't make the same ones. So, speaking of mistakes, man oh man did I make some when I had my first child. So this was back in 2014, which is when I lived in a small space as I do now, but I had no clue what minimalism was. I was more about more is more than less is more. Fast forward to 2020, so much has changed and I am about to shower you with a ton of wisdom that I really wish I was aware of way back in 2014 when Isha was born. When I found out I was having a daughter, I was over the moon. I couldn't wait to buy all of those cute little outfits and take matching mama and baby photos. Well, let me tell you, motherhood is hard. It's exhausting and you won't have time for your baby to wear all of those cute outfits. Having one or two cute ones is fine, but a closet full is a complete waste of money and space. You're gonna blink and your baby is gonna be a toddler and no longer fit in that cute little dress. On top of that, you'll be spending most of your time at home changing diapers, feeding, and trying to get your baby to nap that your baby will be spending most of their time in sleepers. So when it comes to baby clothes, stick to sleepers and onesies, buy a couple of cute outfits and call it a day. On my website, tinyandtidy.co, not .com, .co, yes, that's a thing now, I have a shop, click on the kids section and you'll see what I recommend buying for babies. All I gotta say is less is more and you can always buy it when you need it. There's no need to stock up on so much clothing for your baby. Also, people will keep on giving you gifts and they love to give clothes and toys for babies and kids. So most likely, you won't even need to buy anything. Another thing I would highly recommend doing, something I also didn't do, is try to buy gender neutral clothing so that you can use it on the next kid if you have more than one child. I bought a ton of pink for my daughter, which I regret since I then had two boys after. My kids are now five, three, and one, and over the years, I've learned what type of clothing I like to buy for them. First thing, less is more. I know I said this earlier, but it's worth repeating. Kids grow so quickly, so don't stock up. They will grow out of it before they even get to wear it if you buy too much. I know that the sales that they have sometimes are irresistible, but trust me, there will always be sales, and you can always buy it when you need it. The more you buy, the more you will have to store and manage. That's gonna take up so much space, time, energy, and money. Just don't do it. Buy it when you need it. Second thing, buy darker solid colors. I like to buy darker colors because kids stain everything. So it's less likely for stains to show up on darker colors. The reason I like solid colors over things that have all sorts of pictures, logos, and patterns is because they're easier to mix and match. So you can have fewer pieces but make lots of different outfits. Also, to be honest, I just don't really like the tacky hearts, flowers, frogs, and superheroes that they like to plaster all over kids' clothing. And since my kids haven't really had clothing like that, they never ask for it. And if I do get them something with a print or pattern, I try to keep it as neutral as possible so that it can easily be mixed and matched. Their pajamas is where we tend to go more wild and pretty much anything goes when it comes to PJs. Lastly, as I mentioned earlier, I do try to stick to gender neutral if possible. It's not as important as your kids get older because they don't grow as quickly anymore. The less you buy, the more they'll wear the pieces so they actually get worn out and you might not be able to hand it down to a younger child anyway. However, I love basic sweatpants and sweatshirts for kids. 
H&M has a basics line and that is my go-to for kids clothing. By the way, this isn't sponsored by H&M. My kids go to public school, so they don't have a uniform, but what I've done is basically create a uniform system for them. I like sweatpants and sweatshirts because they're warm, comfortable, and they're gender neutral. For the sweatshirts, I like to get hoodies with zippers rather than the ones without zippers. That way kids can open them if they're feeling too hot. You can also style them differently uh, by putting a different color t-shirt or tank top underneath. My favorite colors for these jogger sets are black, dark gray, navy, red, and for my daughter, I'll like to include a dark pink or purple one. I mix and match the bottoms and tops, or I use it as a set, there's so many options. So my daughter never had an issue with these joggers. She liked them, she would wear them all the time. But then after a while, she said that she didn't like having the baggier pants and wanted tighter pants. So then I ended up getting her um, a set of leggings in all the different colors. Um, so then she would wear this hoodie with leggings instead. But then now she says that she wants the baggier pants again. So then she's wearing those again. So we have both for my daughter. Either she can wear the sweatshirt with leggings or the baggier joggers. Under the sweatshirt, I like to buy solid long sleeve tops for the fall and winter and solid t-shirts or tank tops for the spring and summer. So here in Toronto, Canada, I find that an outfit like this is suitable for fall, winter, and spring. It's warm enough to get them through the winter, and in the spring or fall, if they're feeling too warm, they can simply remove the hoodie or leave it unzipped. In the summer, I'll just add a few pairs of shorts to their wardrobe and they can match that up with one of their t-shirts or tank tops. And my daughter likes dresses, so I'll buy a few of those for her. Since we do our laundry once a week, I find that 10 jogging suits, seven long sleeve tops, seven t-shirts or tank tops, and seven pairs of shorts and a few dresses per child is more than enough to get them through the week. Obviously, you'll also need to buy enough pairs of socks and underwear for the week and four pajama sets is usually enough. As for fancier outfits, I find that two each is all they need. We usually just go to friends' houses or birthday parties at indoor playgrounds, so their joggers work perfectly for those outings. And if we're going somewhere fancier, then they can wear one of their two dressier outfits. And since we're South Asian, their grandparents will usually buy them some cultural outfits. I think one each is all they need since we don't really go to very many cultural events. As for their shoes, I try to buy gender neutral if possible. For example, Crocs are great, especially if you stick to a color like red or black. Shoes in general, I tend to gravitate towards black since they easily coordinate with all of their outfits and they don't get dirty very easily. I find that all they need is one pair of winter boots, one pair of rain boots, two pairs of runners since at school they usually need an indoor pair and an outdoor pair, and one pair of Crocs and one pair of dress shoes. Although right now, I don't have a pair of dress shoes for any of my kids. They've grown out of what they did have and I haven't bothered to get them a new pair since it's very rare that they attend events where they need dress shoes. But when an event like that arises, I'll buy them the shoes then because if I buy it now, now, they'll probably grow out of it by the time the event happens. Now let's get into how I organize their clothing. So our youngest Josh sleeps in a crib in our den, so I just have baskets on shelves in his nursery and I've categorized all of his stuff. He also has a slim cupboard with labeled containers for his clothing. He goes through his clothes very quickly, so I don't bother folding everything, it just gets categorized into one of these baskets or containers. As for Kian and Isha, they share a bedroom. I've actually gone into great detail about their shared bedroom in this video, so check that out if you want to know more. But basically all I did was add a second rod so that they could easily share this closet. Isha's clothes are on top and Kian's clothes are on the bottom. I also like using labeled closet dividers, which I'll link in the description box down below to help keep everything categorized. The bins up above hold their underwear, socks, and shorts. I also used these shoe racks from Ikea to create a second level so that I could store other miscellaneous items. 
Lastly, I added a shoe rack at the bottom for their shoes. Now, we live in a fairly small condo, so I had to be creative with how I stored their clothing. However, if you live in a bigger space, you obviously wouldn't have to store your kids' clothes in the same way. So in my Clear the Clutter membership, I explain how to organize your home step by step, room by room, and I show you all different types of options and teach tons of tips and tricks that would work in any space. I know that not everyone's space is the same, so I'll explain how you can best organize your space. So if you're interested in learning how to fully organize your home and implement systems that are easy to maintain, then sign up for my Clear the Clutter membership. The link is in the description box down below. You can also visit my website www.tinyandtidy.co for more information. So that's a general overview of how I created their capsule wardrobes and how I organize it. I also have systems in place when it comes to laundry, planning and organizing their outfits for the week, all of which will be covered in great detail in the Clear the Clutter membership. So again, if that's something you're interested in, sign up, save yourself a ton of time and stress and learn how to stay organized. The link is in the description box down below and on my website. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and leave a comment down below with the word more so that I'll know that you want to see more videos like this one. Follow me over on Instagram and Facebook because that's where I share daily tips and tricks all about getting organized, saving time and simplifying your life. Next week's video is going to be all about my spring and summer capsule wardrobe. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when that video is posted. Lastly, make sure to check out one of these videos for even more useful tips and tricks when it comes to home organization. As always, thanks for watching guys and happy tidying. Bye!